Hey, hey, what up, what up? It's your boy Toby D, and you already know what it is. It is pound for pound. Guys, I'm just going to tell you right now. That game on Sunday is going to go down as one of my most favorite games ever. Now, about four or five years ago, you would not find me saying something like that, even if we had won the game, because I would probably be like most saying that I was not happy with the way we won that game. Because it is no profound surprise. We're going to have to grind this year if we want to get back into the dance to even qualify to get to the Super Bowl. So let's just know that based on these first three games, at least two out of those three, the grind is real. And as fans, we got to grind too, baby. We got to keep believing, keep striving to get back there in hopes of getting to Super Bowl 52. And right now, from where I'm standing, or sitting rather, doing this podcast, it's looking pretty doggone good early, even though we're in the grind mission. Now, I want to give a shout out to JR, man. I asked him Sunday, I texted him and asked him, man, could you please do the post game for me? And it's something, something that he normally doesn't like to do, especially because he told me the emotions of the game, man. And I know this had to be definitely up there as far as heart attack, emotional game for a lot of us. But man, he did it for me and I really appreciate it, man. I, I really appreciate all of you who have listened to it as well. Uh, gave your points of views and commented and shared and liked it and subscribed to the channel, man. We couldn't do what we do without having an audience like you to be able to talk about our Atlanta Falcons, more wonderful Atlanta Falcons fans. So I, I got to get that on out there. Shout out to him for it, doing that for me. Guys, we're 3-0. And whether they like it or not, they got to talk about us, whether it's negative or positive. And speaking of talking about us, Here's what I want to talk about today. This is on my mind. You know, guys, I've determined that I feel like many NFL fans and the NFL and media feel like the Falcons are the most undeserving, not deserving to win team in the NFL. And I'm sure many of you realize why I'm saying this. You know, it is all good as long as we're the team to be other teams stepping stool to step over and win the Super Bowl. It's fine. But the year we decide that we're not allowing that to happen and we're going to be the ones to actually take up the opportunity to get to a Super Bowl, it's a problem. It's one of those things where all you hear is they don't deserve it because all they're going to do is blow it. Well, here's what I got to say to that. If your team can get there and have consistent success, excuse me, then congratulations to you. But let's try to get some five years of consistent success first before you come talking to me about anything concerning my Atlanta Falcons. Now, before the season even started, Tampa Bay all but had the division in their hands. Everybody was already crowning them as the NFC South darlings. Now, it's still early yet. The season is far from over. Many games going on. But right now, from where I'm looking at, it don't look too good for them on the injury front. They got a lot of players down. And they got their behinds whipped. Now, I am going to say this much. From what I saw, I like what Tampa Bay is trying to do and what they're trying to become. But I'm going to tell you right now, if that defense that you relied on to be the powerhouse that they were the second half of the season continues to look like they looked in that game against the Vikings, now albeit injuries plagued them, then you are going to have yourselves some major problems. 
And right now, as you can see, the offense, albeit I see what they're trying to do, they're not clicking right now. And that could be dangerous for the money that you just spent on a 31-year-old wide receiver that's not even six feet tall. I'm just saying. Now, he had a pretty decent game, Mr. Deshaun Jackson, against the Minnesota Vikings, but they basically said, look, we're going to take Mike Evans away and force the rest of the guys like Adam Humphreys and O.J. Howard, the rookie tight end, and Brett to beat us. You already don't have a run game, no Doug Martin, and the run game that you got going on, I, Jacquees Rogers is not cutting it, and Barbara is not cutting it. And Jeremy McNichols said, bump y'all. I'm going to San Francisco 49ers practice squad. So there goes your fifth round pick that you took a chance on cutting him and thinking he's going to come back because y'all made him feel some type of way. Yes, that's what he said on Hard Knocks. I watched it. I watched all of the episodes. I mean, could you help it? They kept putting Tampa Bay out there so much to us. I, I, I just, I, I bit the bait and just started watching just to see what the competition was going to look like. And right now, I'm feeling real good because we are one of the only 3-0 teams out there besides the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, people can say we don't deserve that because, once again, they deem us as the most undeserving team in the NFL. Uh, we should easily be or could easily be 1-2, but... From what I remember, Bill Parcells said, you are what your record says you are. And as of right now, we are a three and old team. I don't care how we got there. We're there. We know that the grind is going to be a grind in 2017. And I ain't mad at it. But who are you to decide if we should be winning or not? Now, some of you your teams, I admit, that win the Falcons got may have altered your season, and it may not be for the best. You could end up easily spiraling the other way after that loss. I'm just saying. And right now, Detroit is about to run into a hot Minnesota team, even with Sam Bradford out. And that's going to be a challenge. Now, Detroit's defense is not bad. I got to give them props. They turned the ball over on Matt Ryan three times. Now, two of those were not Matt Ryan's fault. So, technically, only one of those you actually forced the turnover. But you did well because of your coaching. You're always taught as a defensive player to tip drill. And y'all did well in that fashion. Even if it wasn't y'all guys who tipped it up for the other guy. We helped you out. That's cool. But, ladies and gentlemen, two of those games when the Falcons gave you chances, i.e. Chicago and recently Detroit, to win the game, our defense would not allow you to win it. So, you can't tell us what we deserve or don't deserve. I know your fans, you're caught in the heat of the moment. You won a game. Well, my defense says otherwise. That defense that everybody called trash, that's not good. But all of a sudden, it's climbing up on the stat charts. Now, turnovers is something I'm concerned about because we're not getting enough of those. And with Matt Ryan having a 4-3 to three touchdown to interception ratio, that makes me nervous going into this Buffalo game because Sean McDermott, the head coach over there, has those guys playing really well with the Buffalo Bills but good news is they're coming into this house this house in which I believe we can run the table yeah I said it just like Aaron Rodgers said that he believed his team could run the table I believe we can go 8-0 for the first time since Matt Ryan has been our quarterback I think the closest we came was 7-1 in 2010 Somebody correct me on that because I might be wrong. But 
We've never been 8-0, and how great would that be with the Mercedes-Benz Stadium opening that we go 8-0 in the new stadium? And I think after seeing the sample of what we saw Sunday night against the Green Bay Packers, I believe that is very possible. And fans, that's why we need y'all to get in there. Now I found something funny after Detroit lost that game. I hear Donovan McNabb say that he believes the Falcons are the most overrated team in the NFL. Now, that was just sad for me to hear. You can't give us props, but we're the most overrated because you question whether the defense can hold up. And, of course, you got to go back to Super Bowl 51, just like the rest of you fans. You got to go back to Super Bowl 51. You blew a 28-3 lead. Well, I'm sorry, my friends. You couldn't decide whether we were going to make that Super Bowl or not. It's not like any one of your teams was able to stop us. And as of right now, we're 3-0. You couldn't stop us from getting to 3-0. So regardless of whether you positive speaking about us or negatively speaking about us, the fact of the matter is you got to talk about us, baby. But you don't get to decide whether we win or not don't worry about how we win or why we win or if we deserve to win just know that we win now what we do when we get to that place that you desire for your team to be that's our business if you don't want to watch us there's plenty of other channels that you can watch especially if you got cable you don't have to watch us but many of you, I know, watch us because you hope that we are going to lose anyway. And that's fine with me. But ladies and gentlemen, technically, we weren't supposed to get here. We got paired compared to Carolina because they had a Super Bowl hangover. So guess what everybody kept saying we were going to do? Oh, I don't know if the Falcons going to ever get over to that loss. You got a 25-point lead and you blow it like that. That's the worst loss in NFL history. While I agree with all of that, so far 3-0 is kind of making that Super Bowl hangover null and void at this point. And it's all good in the neighborhood because I'm not mad about being 3-0 at all. Hey, you're going to have to wait another week before you can say anything, and I feel real, real, real good right now about going 4-0. I'm just saying. And if I remember correctly, in 2012, we ended up being the last team undefeated. I think you had the Houston Texans up there. They hung in with us as long as they could, and they finally went down. And we stayed undefeated until we got to the New Orleans Saints. I can't remember what week that was. It might have been week eight or so. Um, we was like 7-0 and at some point or like that. And... They beat us, but it was all good because we still made the playoffs. And if we can just get in the dance, we know it's going to be a grind. That's all we can ask for, to fight for a chance to get back to a Super Bowl playing in Minnesota, whom we got to face this year, interestingly enough. But right now, ladies and 